Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to Home Automation with Arduino and the Amazon Echo or Alexa Part 3. So if you haven't seen Parts 1 and 2, I recommend you watch those first. In Part 3, we're going to be doing home automation, but this time the data is going to be flowing the other way. So in Parts 1 and 2, we are pushing data out from Alexa to the Arduino. In this example, we're pulling data from the Arduino to the Alexa. If you like what you see here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, check me out on Twitter or on Facebook, and check out Forstronics.com. All right, let's get started. Okay, like I mentioned before, we're gonna be monitoring a device to check its state or an appliance in the home. I'm gonna use a washer for my example, and the idea here is in my home, the washer is in the basement, it's hard to hear, and I don't wanna go down there to check on it. So if I can ask Alexa if it's running or if it's done, that's much easier. And in part three specifically, we're gonna be looking at the cloud setup, the, the Lambda function, the Node.js code, and the, you know, the font cloud setup. And then in part four, we'll look at the Arduino hardware setup in detail. Here's a reminder of the setup, and the only two things that are different here are the directions of the arrow, of the arrows, because we have data flowing the other way because we're now monitoring a device rather than controlling a device. And here I have to mention that I switched from the Node MCU, which uses the popular ESP8266, to the Maker 1000. And the reason I did this, they're both Wi-Fi enabled. Of course, the Node MCU is a lot cheaper, but the Maker 1000 has a much better ADC. And I found that for the measurements I had to make on the current from the washer to monitor it, I needed the higher resolution. I also needed the 3.3 volt range. And I also found that the, the ESP8266 ADC in general is not as accurate as, as the SAMD21, which is you know the MCU on the Maker 1000. I'll talk more about these, these different hardware pieces in part four. And I'll also mention in part three that if you want to stick with the Node MCU, you know, some code you can leverage for that because once again, this, this project is not meant to be a cut and paste project. You know, you're not probably not going to have the same washer I had. It's, it's mainly an example for you to leverage or build on for your exact application. So I'll talk about how you could use the Node MCU if you want to stick with that. All right, let's get started. Let's look at a video example of, of this setup in action, and then we'll look at some of the code. Okay, here what we're looking at is my computer screen, and I'm on the font web page for my cloud setup for this example. And I'm purposely hiding, you know, my, my public key, but basically here's the timestamps, and you should be familiar with the font cloud setup because we already talked about it, but here's our timestamps and here's our field, and I have washer state. And it's pretty simple. If it's a zero, the washer is off. If it's a one, the washer is running. And once again, that's gonna be measured by the Arduino hardware, which I'll talk about in part four. So in this example, I'm just going to use the a web browser to simulate the Arduino hardware sending the different washer states to the font cloud. And then we're going to see the Alexa is going to read those states and then interpret that back to you. So here I'm just showing that the latest washer state is a one. So I sent in some dummy data and the last one was a one saying that the washer is on. So now I'm going to go out to the Alexa. Alexa, ask Forstronics Home Automation if the washer is on. The washer is running. Okay, we can see that Alexa read that correctly. Now what I'm gonna do, and I'm purposely hiding this from you, is I'm gonna send a zero to the font cloud to say that the washer is off. And I'm using a web string to send it, and I don't want you to see you know, my public key. So that's why we're not seeing anything. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refresh the browser to make sure that zero registered. So the browser's refreshing, we can see the zero. So now the washer is off or at least simulated off. Alexa, ask Forstronics Home Automation if the washer is on. The washer is off. Okay, there we go. So I just sent some simulated washer state data to the font cloud then the Alexa Lambda function along with the Alexa skill was able to read that and interpret it and you know 
audibly communicate that data to me. So let's look at how we did that setup more on the cloud side. Okay, here we're looking at the interaction model for the Alexa skill at developer.amazon.com. This is my account, so I'm purposely not going to show some of the some of the data, but you know, here is the intent in a JSON format, and I showed this last time, so there's nothing new. These two intents were used for parts one and two, turning the light on and off. Here we just have one intent, is the washer running? And if we go down here, here's my sample utterances for is the washer running? You know, I can say is the washer on, is the washer running, is the washer done, is the washer finished, is the washer off, okay? And we could test it here in the developer portal, but I'm going to test it in the, uh, the Lambda function. Okay, here we are looking at the code, the Node.js code, and this is what's going to build the Lambda function in the Amazon AWS. What I'm showing the, the code in right now is Atom, which is just a text editor, and I'm just using it to show, because it's easier to show the code here. You could just, you know, edit the code right in, in AWS. I'm just showing it here as a text editor, just so it's easier to explain to you. One thing I'll mention, once again, is I am new to Node.js, which is the programming language we're using for the Lambda function. If you're watching and you're a Node.js expert, feel free to provide any feedback in the comments section on my Node.js code. Here, one thing I added was, besides just AT, HTTPS, we can also use HTTP. Here we have our try catch function, and I'm not going to talk too much about this code because we already talked about it in parts one and two, but here's if, if I just say to Alexa, Alexa, ask Forstronics Home Automation, this will tell me welcome to Forstronics Home Automation skill. Oh, it says say turn light on or off. Actually, I need to update that to add the washer portion as well. But that's just mentioned, that, that part's just to help the user understand how to use that Alexa skill. Okay, now we get to the intent request. So notice we have those same intents that we had when we looked at it on the uh, Alexa developer porter, portal. We have turn light on and we have turn light off. And I covered those in parts one and two and I didn't change those, so I'm not gonna touch on them. Here's the new one. Is the washer running? So if we say a sample utterance that's related to this intent, this is where Alexa is going to call in the Lambda function, and then the Lambda function is going to go to the font cloud to get the data we need, and then Alexa is going to read back the state to us. So here is my URL, and I just realized I'm going to have to blur this out so you can't see my key, but basically I'm just trying to get a CSV page from the font cloud. So that's what's being stored in this variable. Next, I use an HTTP GET request to send that endpoint, which is basically the, the URL. And then this function is going to grab that response from that GET request. And then here is the response. You can see response here. So the response from the font cloud is stored here. We're then going to set the right encoding. Then we're going to do another function to look at the data in the response. And then these variables, these are basically so I can grab the date and time, or I should say date and hour from the, uh, the Amazon server, as well as get the date and hour from the font data. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to make sure that the data is recent, meaning, you know, what happens if our hardware is shut off? Well, then the font cloud is just going to have an old state, and Alexa is going to read that old state, and she's going to communicate a state for the washer, which may not be true. So I'm using these variables later on. I'll show you the function to just make sure that the data I'm getting is actually recent. And what this is doing is it's grabbing these long strings and it's using the substring to parse the string and grab the hour and date that we're looking for. So here's a function that I'll call that I'll show you down below that I wrote and it's basically called check time and I'm grabbing those same variables here, feeding it into the function 
And basically this if statement says, okay, if the data is fresh, then this function will be true and we can go ahead and, and read the data and use the data. So we're first checking if the data is fresh, it is. Next, we're gonna parse the string and basically where I get this 22 and the one is, you know, I looked at the, the, the page that's returned from the font cloud and I basically read out 22 spaces to grab that field, which is the one or the zero. And so if it is a one, then that means the washer is running. And then I'm gonna generate my response and build my speech, which these are two functions that, that I showed last time that are below. And basically Alexa is gonna say the washer is running, just like, just like we saw in the example. If it's a zero, Alexa is gonna tell us the washer is off. If there was some kind of issue and the data is not a one or a zero, then Alexa is just gonna say, you know, there was an error checking the washer state. And then if this check time is not true, meaning the data is old, then this else statement's gonna say, uh, no recent washer state data available. And notice here, I, I left in one of my debug things, so console log, and we'll see in the, uh, in the AWS interface that we can actually do a lot of good testing and debugging there, and, and this is what I was just putting in there to, to test my, my time function. And this is if there was an error in the function and it, it's just gonna report the error to the, the console. If I go down, here's the functions that were called. I talked about these last time, the build speech response and generate response. I actually leveraged those from another tutorial. I did not write those. And then here's the function that I wrote that checks the, the time or the date, the time, the hour and the date. And all I do here is basically say, okay, if the date from the Amazon server and the date from the font cloud data is equal, as well as the hour, then we know it's recent data and we can return a one. If the date is equal, but the hour is just one off, meaning maybe you know, the, you know we had the clock roll over to the next hour, then the, then the data is still good. And then here I say, if the date is off by one, but if we're at midnight, then you know the data is still fresh. Now I could get down to lower granularity and say, you know, is the data two or three or four or five minutes old? And if it's older, then it's not good. I, I'm not going into that much detail here. I'm just checking to make sure it's within an hour. Okay, let's look at the AWS interface and the Lambda function there, and let's run a test on it. Okay, here is the, the code we just looked at, just in the AWS interface. So there's my Lambda function. You know, if we wanna set up a test, we can go here. I already have the test configured, but I'll just show you. So a lot of this is auto-generated, but the one thing you wanna change is your intent. So I just have, is the washer running? Because that's what we wanna test. So I'm just gonna push save and test. It's gonna run the test. Let me actually make this a little bigger. So execution succeeded. We got the green check mark. We can see what Alexa's response was right here. The washer is off and which is, is the case. And I'll show you the, the font data to show that. And then here's where you would see your console print. So if you're doing debug, you know, the logging to the console, this is where you're gonna see that data right here. Okay, and I just wanted to show you here we are at the font cloud and we can see that the last washer state is zero. So when I ran the test, you know, it, it actually came out right. Okay, that's it for part three. And in part four, we're gonna look at the hardware setup, the Arduino, the code for the Arduino to send the data to the cloud, and then the measurement setup, the, the current transformer, as well as the signal conditioning circuit used. If you have anything to add, use the comment section below, and thank you for watching.